guys hey so i am going to share with you how i created this blanket design for my grandson he likes paw patrol he likes coco melon he likes mickey mouse those are some of his favorite um characters right now so the typical two-year-old i am going to I made this design large. I think it is a right now um, about a nine by ten or so around that frame. Let's see, yeah, about nine by ten. But it is too large because I'm working in Cricut Design Space and it does not allow me to print that large. If you come over here, you see that little warning sign that's letting me know that my image is way too big. So if you click on that, it would tell you how big it needs to be. So they want me to reduce my size to 6.75 by 9.25, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna hack the system and I'm going to do a bigger image and I'm gonna cut it in half, slice it in half, and then I'm gonna piece my pictures together to get a um, bigger size because for one, for print and cut, that is the only allowed size in Cricut Design Space that they will allow you to, um, the biggest size that they will allow you to print and cut. Um, now, if I was using maybe Silhouette, I think it's a bigger size, but I also have a printer that only prints, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's 11 by 12 or 11 by 13. I'm not sure, but 100% sure, but I know it doesn't print large size either. So I need to stay within a certain size anyway. But to hack that system, you can um, do little things like what I'm about to show you now. So what I did is come over here to shapes and I put um, a square. Got my square, I unlocked it so I can change the size of the square. I'm just gonna drag it out. Cause I want it to be big and I'm just gonna drag it across the whole width of my image and I'm going to kind of eyeball this and try to do maybe half and half I like to cut my image in half at a point where if there is a little bit of a overlap or overlay in the design that is not that obvious so we're going to do about right here. Um, actually, I'm going to take it up some right underneath the little um, part of the A right here. So then I'm going to I'm going to take and I'm going to select this entire image. Make sure I get the square in there as well. So once that is selected, I'm going to go down here in this corner here where it says slice and i'm going to click slice what it is going to do is slice this image in half okay so now we just sliced it in half so you can see in the background how it did that so i can take this away and delete it and then I leave this part here as well. I don't need it. I'm going to delete it as well. Now I have two parts. Now the trick is I need to make sure that my image, which it is not, is still too big. I'm still getting that warning side, size. So what I'm going to do now is go back and I'm make sure I'm going to go back to so I can really get it to line back up. I'm gonna select the entire image and I'm gonna make it um, nine by two five, okay? So first I'm going to I'm going to group it just so it can stay together. And then I'm going to make it now 0.25 up here, now 0.25. I'm just going to change that. I'm only doing this just so it can still print for me. 
Now, why in the heck did the height change? <laughs> oh, it's because I connected. So now I'm going to ungroup it. Now I have a piece that is within the range so that I can print. As you can see, I have no warning signs. So I have the top piece and I have the bottom piece. Now I will print both these pieces out and I will put them together and then I will have a um, size of 9.2, I think it was 9.25 by 10 something whatever size something like that it's definitely bigger than the normal allowed size okay so i'm just going to close i'm not going to close it but i'm going to hide it because i also want to do the same for the cocomelon image so hitting those eyeballs will hide your image i'm going to unhide the cocomelon image and i'm going to do the same thing Now, if you wanted to, you could just make a, a lot of different um, small sizes on your blanket. But I just want one big size. I'm going to pull it out. Pull it out. Uh, pull it down a little. Uh, this one actually don't need to be too big. So we'll go up here and put 9.25 up here. Because we already know Cricut's going to trip if we don't. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pull out my square. So that I can have the picture. I need to unlock the square. And I'm just going to look at this I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to do it about here that looks like a very easy um, split let me see what size does that make it okay going to split go over here and slice it right here at the bottom down here and click slice my image will slice my computer is moving a little bit slow everyone is on the wi-fi tonight so wonderful we're going to go ahead and click that out and we're going to move that over and we're going to click that out as well and now we have our two pieces. We have this piece, which is 7.53 by 5.73. And we have this one, which is 9.25 by four inches. And then we'll put them on top of each other. We're going to uh, do it. I'm gonna print them. So now we can send these to our, our printer. And do that first. I want to save. Let me go ahead and save everything. I like to save because sometimes uh, Cricut will be tripping, and yeah, you want to make sure you save your projects because sometimes you, all that work you would have done, you have to go back and redo. So let's click save. I'm just gonna give it a name real quick. Um, let's see. my custom label well okay so i got that saved let's say project has saved successfully and now i'm going to click um i'm gonna click make it so i click make it it's going to sort the mats 
So as you see, it's gonna do one, two, three, four prints. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and print it and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my images. What you see here, this black line around the image is the registration mark that is needed in order for your Cric Cricut machine to cut your image. I'm not going to use the Cricut today. I'm just going to cut by hand since I'm sublimating. With sublimation, any white areas do not show up on your substrate. So you don't have to get very detailed with the cutting. You just need to cut around it. And I've also heard um, people say that if you tear your paper, instead of doing this blunt cutting, when you go to press it with the heat press, that it won't leave such harsh lines. So I think I'm gonna test that theory out, but I think with one image, I'm going to do straight cut as I've done here for these um, two. I don't know if that's upside down or what, but yeah, for these two. And then for the other design, they said if you tear it, it's best. So I'm going to just tear away the black line, being careful not to tear my image. And see if that makes any difference when we go to press onto the um, blanket. I hope you guys can still see me because my computer light just went out. And that's what I was using for my light. This is a very quick video that I just um, decided to share with you guys since I was in the process of making this for my grandson. And I realized that I have not shared many sublimation videos with you guys. Okay, so I'm almost done with this one. And the second one I'm gonna do it off the, off the camera. But so this is the, the tear away look. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one and then we will um, meet back at the heat press. Oh, and you guys, I absolutely forgot to tell you that when you are about to print your image or before you actually print your image to make sure that you mirror the image in design space and if you don't want to mirror it there because i don't usually do mine in the design space because i have it all set up to be reversed or mirrored when i go to print so in the background of my printing settings i have it where it automatically will um reverse my image so you want to make sure that your image is reversed okay so i'll see you guys at the heat press all right, so this is the fleece throw or blanket that I would be making for my grandbaby. Um, this is Mainstays, I got it from Walmart. And yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and open this and we're going to make him a blanket. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna show you while we're waiting for the press to heat up is how we um we're gonna start we're gonna do oh we're gonna do cocomelon first so i'm gonna put that to the side we're gonna basically line them up
I'll do it this way. And I'm going to use my heat transfer tape to um, take down the design. And I'm going to get it as close as I possibly can. I'm actually going to turn this over on the back. I'll just put just a little piece here without pressing it down so it has that little lip here. So now when I line it up, press it down and it's one piece. Okay, and if you want to, you could take a piece on both sides. So I'm probably going to do that. And another piece here. Okay. Now walk it over here you can see my press is at 334 330 um see so actually i said i'm gonna set it at 400 for 60 seconds but i'm actually gonna do because this material is fleece i'm actually gonna do it at about um 380. so i'm gonna let that heat up i'll be back okay so we want to um pull this up for you we want to Lint roll our blanket to make sure in the area where we're going to press that. Just want to make sure that it's not any loose particles on it. Let us see, that's not going good. It really um, matters the most when you're using white, but because this is a light fabric, I still want to lint roll it. And then I'm going to give it a pre-press to get the moisture out of it. Now my press is still heating up. Okay. And I'm going to now figure out where I want to lay my image down. Right in this area would be good. Right near the edge. I'll put just a little tuck a little about right there. And I'm gonna tape it down. Well, actually, I, I'm not going to tape it down because tape on this fleece is kind of iffy. So I'm going to use my um, adhesive spray. And I'm going to spray that actually on my image lightly. Okay. And... And then I'm going to use a Teflon sheet um, in between, underneath a uh, uh, butcher paper, actually, underneath here. So let me get a tear a piece of butcher paper because in case it bleeds through, I don't want it to bleed to the other side of the blanket. So I'm going to flip this over. Okay. And 
think I'm gonna put my put your paper on top. I was gonna use a Teflon sheet, but I'm just gonna go with the um, put your paper because I'm scared the ink might even get on my Teflon sheet. This is butcher paper, in case you don't know. It's a big roll. I'm about out. I need to buy some more. You can get it from Amazon or your local sale store or something like that. Okay, so my press is heated up to 380. So I'm gonna press it for 60 seconds. There it goes, you guys. Let me see, make sure. Be right back. All right. And just put that we are done. We can remove. See, you can already see where it looks like it was coming through. The butcher paper and it definitely came through this. And this is why you want to have your uh, butcher paper here to protect. I don't know if you can see any. See on the butcher paper, how it bleeds through slightly. So you want to have that to help protect your image. And I don't know if it bled through on the bottom. It did not. That is wonderful. But let's go ahead and reveal. I'm going to pick it up more. Let me sit you guys down so I can do it. Sorry. I'm trying to hold the camera in one hand. Okay, let's see if this is better. All right. I needed both my hands, you guys. Sorry about that. So let me show you how it looks. Now you see the press mark a little bit around. I don't know if you can see it. Let me lay it down. Maybe you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the press marks that I was talking about. That if you tear your paper, maybe you won't see this. Well, actually, this is the press, the mark from the press itself. Um, this will come out when you wash the blanket. Um, and right here around, it's not that bad because I made my pressure um, a little bit light. You want to make sure your pressure's not too tight, but this is how it turned out. I hope my baby loves it. This is his Coca Melon watching blanket. I'm going to flip it over on the other side. Not here, but on this corner. And I am going to do the Paw Patrol. So I'm going to do the same steps, repeat the same steps, and I'll show you what it looks like in the end. Because this part needs to be straight, I don't need to worry about the tear here. I actually need this to be as straight and flush as possible up top. So I'm just going to cut it so that it'll blend. My kids are being loud, you guys. Please just disregard them. They're being kids. It's my two youngest kids. Okay. So this is what I was talking about. And you see how I just matched up? I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Well, you can. I can zoom it in. I don't know if I can zoom it in. But the goal is to match up right here. Try to get no white showing if possible. And there's a little bit white showing right by his hat. So I need to cut this a little bit closer.
this is always the tricky part and sometimes it's not that perfect i know some people like to do a um print over like a little overhang print the picture a little bit beyond where they normally want to use it at for that reason i haven't mastered that yet so i just do it a difficult way okay so i made it move so i gotta size it back up Okay, so a bigger image. We're going to take it over to the press. Spray it just like I did the last time. see it still has a little tear away line but this is how it came out and I thought that the image was going to be messed up because on the paper it didn't look right but as you see it printed just fine just fine absolutely love it I hope my grandson loves it and if you guys would like to have one made probably on a different type of blanket because I don't know if they have any more of these but um, I can just reach out to me and check out my Etsy site at Glamazon Design Shop it will be linked down in the description box see you guys in the next one don't forget to like comment and subscribe bye bye decided to come back really quick and add his name to the blanket so I went back in and designed um, his name I'm going to send it to the printer and I'm going to go ahead and press it the same as I did everything else I went back and after I did this I said let me add my baby's name to the blanket so here you see where I added his name to the corner of the blanket and this was the final look. I also did it on the other side as well.